I am currently recording with two girthy individuals. If you can't tell by all the breathing taking place around me, trust me, there's some girth going on in the room. So that's why I'm talking about Fraternity of Girth, fogapparel.com. They make clothes for these guys, for the girthy among us. The people that love comfy clothes, good designs. I flew on an airplane all day today with the pirate captain, Hayden Balia, the founder, the CEO of Fog Apparel. He breathed pretty normally, honestly. It wasn't like his previous podcast appearances. His breath was under control. The only time he started breathing a little harder was when he got real excited talking about the new drops that are coming for Fog Apparel. So, new drops coming all the time. Keep checking the site. Keep listening here. Use code HEAVYLIGHT. You're going to save 10% at fogapparel.com. Heavylight! Now everybody watch me turn the record button and all of a sudden... Like... Let's let this fucking post real quick. So we're supposed to talk over you when you start. Correct. Anytime someone you got starts it, man, to no talk... Problem. Yes. God, you're Who's a pro. Who's going to breathe heavy? So you're That's like a podcast expert, yes. I'm guessing. Mm-hmm. That's Okay, good, good. You need somebody to breathe heavy. You yeah. talk I don't right. think we're going to have a problem with somebody breathing heavy. I don't think we're going to be What's laughing. that supposed to mean? <laughs> I'll make statements about I want, things hey, I have we're doing, no right <laughs> so, statements Every about. time you say anything, I want you to lean forward to the mic. <laughs> <laughs> just, like, listen, I just, just say listen. stay down on it right here. <laughs> That's what I wish. <laughs> That's what I wish. God damn it, post, you cocksucker. All right, hey. All right. Oh, did it work? Man, you know, I didn't want an angry podcast. I guess that's the one thing that I wish, that we could all get together and not be mad. I guess just once. Good fucking luck with we, that. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you know, Dan, it's the little comments like that. It's the little comments like that. That's what tears us apart. That's what makes, that's what makes it so hard. So we're going to wait for Spencer to finish up with the phone. So, yeah, cause I'm sorry. Hopefully we get some questions. Can we all, should we all get on our phone now? Yeah, and for sure we should all slam our hand to the table as hard as we can anytime we have a thought, too. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's fucking, fucking dangerous. Uh, good, good. New theme song, found. <laughs> <laughs> fucking just... Happy night! <laughs> <laughs> it was, that was inspired by you, the heavy light scream. I want you to know that was, that was a la Aaron. You two dickheads through today, right? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how you look so comfortable and happy. Because throwing's awful on concrete. Uh, throwing's awful in general. But are throwing, we going? Are we done? Oh yeah we're, yeah, we're live. Oh, live. Yeah, it's streaming out I right did, now. I honestly did not. I didn't hear no, the countdown. It's, <laughs> yeah, we're being picked up by the local Fox affiliate right where's now. Your, where's your guitar? Uh, <laughs> Spencer, you're not going to believe this. Uh, some of those are pre-recorded. Uh, I don't believe that at all. I understand. I got you. It's, it's, I don't. It's, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> Spencer just slammed the door. Hey, in the like. <laughs> Your neighbors are pissed right now. <laughs> no, not ours. You're talking about boning each other in their buttholes and screaming not, heavy like. No, we weren't talking not about. Not even once. We were. We were presenting a problem to be solved. It was, it was a all, discussion. It was a mental exercise, if you will. It was a team building. It was, it was fucking team building. Yeah, but you have to visualize that problem. Right? You do. That's a, you have to picture. Well, and who you do you can picture? <laughs> who do? Who did you picture when you thought of two guys? Two NBA players. Fuck, no, that was Aaron. Fucking yeah. me for one. You were uh, one of the guys. I, well, I, I like to have agency. I like to be in control of what's going on. Like sure, I was just like you. I, I went to the, the, the wide pose mm-hmm. and like how do I get the other guy underneath me? Mm-hmm. Like that's immediately where I went. You I think you have to I think either you're a kinesthetic learner or you're a visual learner, right. you know? Your wrestling background helps. I, I think so. Yeah. Oh man. Oh, I, we are in Ohio, so that it is yeah, a great yeah. great wrestling state. That's true. Uh-huh. Also why it smells like butt. <laughs> ah, oh, oh yeah, that. So speaking of Ohio and butt, did, is it still sleeting outside right now? Is it still no, like it's not, bad. It's not it's there's not like I think it was actual snow. Oh god, that, that's snow. not snow. That's actual misery coming out of the sky. Mm-hmm. Like Ohio misery penetrating your skin. Mm-hmm. All this penetration talk tonight. Well, yeah. look, the, we have themes. We're doing a theme tonight. But y'all, look, y'all did throw, right? There was. A, did you actually throw today? I, I didn't see it personally. Yes, we did actually throw. And you were there, and you saw every single throw, probably. Yeah, I did. Yeah. You kind recorded them. Of, kind of. Yeah, you videoed most of them, actually. Yeah, it's I on mean, your timeline. I, yeah, I think this, you talked about it. Most this, it, it this doesn't have to be about me. <clears throat> the, you know, the whole thing. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't, 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 doesn't have to be. You don't have to make the, well, It's not. It doesn't have to be. Okay, we've derailed. Yeah. Also, that's a clip from the news this morning. My representing <laughs> <laughs> was on Fox News. I was on TV today. 
Yeah. Was that Fox? Was that the local Fox? That was local affiliate? Fox. No, I think they went up to uh, New York. I would think it was the Fox News headquarters. I think it was. So we got to bring in somebody bigger. <laughs> yeah. well, we'll bring in a heavy After hitter. they lost Shepard Smith, I think they needed me <laughs> to come short. <laughs> They're going to lead in Tucker Carlson. This is going to be a whole newsroom going. <laughs> hey, Tucker, oh, that's going to be. Bless his heart. <laughs> oh, that's, oh, he's doing, he's doing a good job. The biggest part of the Scottish culture is not following anything up with a bunch of fuck faces and bow ties. Back to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there he is. No, you guys, uh, you guys did pretty well. Spencer, you got the win today, right? Uh, well, yes. yes. Uh, team Terminator got. Team Terminator. I'm sorry. Yes, team. But you, you were the overall winner as well. They're counting that. I don't know if they even did. Steve even care about that? Like the individual winning stuff? Uh, I don't. I don't think so. I think this year was it. So they put like the team's name on the, the trophy on the, right? on the Denny Trophy. I haven't seen the trophy. Ooh. Did we? Uh, I didn't know. One or two years ago. <laughs> no, I, I, I mailed one back. <laughs> God, how much did that cost? That thing... Rogue, Rogue paid for it. They wanted one of them back to do a continuous. So they asked uh, if... Yeah, because I mailed that back and then gave the other one to Steve last year. Okay. But, uh, yeah, no, this year was cool. I hope they keep doing it. It was fun. And it I was surprised. Been, I'm it always been a lot of fun yeah. with the crowd. But, so, for those of you who don't know, the Arnold this year, usually it's five men. Mm-hmm. For for pros and Rogue only sponsored men, so they would he was Rogue sponsored five men this year. It was six total, three men and three women, and we teamed up. Each each man and woman were paired up as a team, and they named us after fucking Arnold. Members. Arnold Arnold characters. It was Team Terminator, Team Predator, twins. I don't know how it wasn't twins. <laughs> oh, it was I'm, bullshit. I'm angry. An you, and it's, if you don't. Oh. If you, if you don't have to realize, Dan has been down from day one with the movie Twins, and whenever the Arnold came up, whenever they did the questionnaires, whatever they did, he has been dyed in the wool about the movie Twins. I cannot understand for the life of me how there's not a Twins. Danny team. motherfucking DeVito. I mean, that's all you needed. That's, what that's all you about. needed to say. Sure. That's all you needed to say. You can't diddle kids. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah, a, but it was cool. So I they, dug it. I actually, I was, I'm, I'm always a little skeptical when a team format comes out because, like, what are they trying to do? Are they trying to cut a corner? Because, but that it was really fucking cool to watch the best dudes and the best chicks throw. It was kind of fucking. Cool. It really was, and and I like the way they did it too. So the only thing that got kind of weird was, so the way I don't know if you even did, did the format was they took total distances combined. It was combined distance. Yeah. Yeah. So it's footage. Whoever had the most, whatever team had the most footage at the end of the game. It was the winner, and the only weird one was Caber. So we did Caber for distance. For distance yeah, right? and, and that, that's why we that ended up question. smoking everybody is because Adrian was the only one who got a legit turn. Yeah, I mean, well, they y'all use the same Caber. We used the same Caber. We used the women's Caber, and Nikita turned it, but it was a bad. It was off to the side. It didn't gain her distance. Yeah, Adrian yeah. actually smoked one, and that's what really put us out there. Well, you and so that was neat. you fellows were damn near putting that thing in the retaining wall. Like it was getting to the point where, like, it well, was. I mean, it was a sixteen foot, sixty five pound. Yeah, camera. that's not. A, we had a ten foot run up. Yeah, yeah. You can so put was, a charge into it. Yeah. yeah, it was it was actually pretty fun to watch. Mm-hmm. You can give it the business. You could. I enjoyed it. <laughs> but yeah, I was that solved that problem of how I thought they were going to do. I was like, because I knew they were doing team scoring, but I've mm-hmm. run team events before. It's like, what the. Fuck do you do with Caber? Yeah, Caber's the weird one. You either just don't count it towards the team, or you do like they did and do distance. Yeah, I, I thought it was cool, and especially in that smaller space. Why not? You still get the effect. If we had had a crowd, they would have dug the Caber for distance just fine. Because yeah, it, yeah. it probably and makes more answer. sense than actual fucking sure. Caber does. Yeah, I mean, well, because people ask that sometimes. Well, what's your what's your PR on Caber? I'm like, I don't know, twelve, twelve o'clock. <laughs> Nailed it. 12. Yeah. No, we talked Not about that on, first on a previous game. episode. We're like, <laughs> first one ever. I think somebody's going 12 plus this year. Like, <laughs> I, I, think, I think somebody's doing it. I heard some, that. Somebody's going to be we're on gonna, We're going to work on a 24 hour clock now. Ooh, somebody. You know, military, military time? time. Military time. Let's do it's this. not like military that. time, it's a 24 hour clock. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, thank you, Spencer. I had one asshole uh, customer correct me one time in his, in his trailer house. What was his name? Hang on. I'll, I, it'll come to me. I bet it's Dale. No, it's always fucking Dale. Chuck. It was Charles. Charles Slack, that Charles motherfucker. Slack. Charles Chuck Slack. Slack. Chuck Slack. <laughs> Chuck Slack. Chucky Slack. Mm-hmm. Does that guy write any sort of fan fiction? Because Chuck Slack is <laughs> just know. straight up. Like that's a guy. That's a guy that writes about cartoon characters. I, I'd straight always, up. I'd always, I'd piss him off because you know he was just a grumpy old fucker. 
And you're a grumpy, right. slightly Young less fucker. old fucker. Yeah, and this yeah. is so that the before and after picture I posted on Instagram recently, that, that was me, that 400 Did, pound. Fucker. I forgot. I threw that year with you and I forgot yeah. how fucking That was my big first, that were. picture was my first pro game. Yeah, I was yeah. there. That was North Texas kickoff. Yeah. That was when they cobbled together as you, Andy, Matt, and Dickens. Yeah, big old fat piece of shit. He All of us so were fat, fat fucks. Fat, yeah, you were fat as fuck. Yeah, he was. Big time. Like, well, so Matt had the best comment on that picture. He was like, he's like, man, y- your beard is the same size. Your face just fucking just <laughs> like, to fit it, you fat piece of shit. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's true. true. My oh, sunglasses I, were like hanging on for dear life. Oh, you could see it in the picture. They're like, they put the crease in your in the side. What this you brown fat in your beard. <laughs> I just had you worked it out. It was goddamn duck breast. Hey, it was it was big up, big ups to those black wraparounds though. Those were fucking next level. That's, those what? Those black wraparound shades you were rocking. Those yeah, are fucking those next level, rough. man. Man, it was those, bad times. Man. That's Adam. I, that's I, Adam Sizemore level wraparound. That's. I had to use diet soap. <laughs> 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 I think it's probably going deeper about that one. Deeper? More with the penetration stuff. Diet stuff? You take it how you want. <laughs> yeah. Is that how you got so fat? We were eating so much. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good. It looks like like frozen sour cream. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sour cream. What else are you going to put in your shower tacos? <laughs> 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 Stupid. Flour tortillas don't mold up for shit. And hot water, by the way. Yeah, you gotta go double corn in the shower. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. You gotta double them up. Could be like Kobayashi dipping in hot Oh, man. <laughs> Well, thanks for running down your throws for us and everything, Spencer. <laughs> yeah, I was a fat piece of shit. I'll tell you what. Now I'm a less fatter piece of shit. Well, I think my comment on it was like... Uh, it was like a it was Midland Trailer periodization. That was your yeah. <laughs> that was your training program at the time. It's like, Pretty much, you lived in a trailer the size of this table we're podcasting at mm-hmm. right now, and the, the only uh, thing you had to do was reach over into a f- fridge and just pull yeah. fucking food out bad. and sit there and then go to work the next day. And the ceiling of the trailer was like six three. Mm. And you're not. So you can't Quite stand six, up three. straight. Yeah, yeah. So There's just, a little bit of just sat down the whole time. <laughs> it's encouraging you not to burn calories. <laughs> oh, big time. So that that year and a half, I put on over a hundred pounds. Yeah. Because yeah. right before I stopped coaching, we took a physical for to get our CDLs to drive the school bus, and I was two eighty nine, because I was coaching with Quint Milas, and he was still just over three hundred. Yeah. And I was like, oh man, what am I going to be? And I was shocked. I was under two ninety. And then I'm like looking at Clint like, you fat piece of shit. <laughs> you pre-diabetic fuck. And yeah, no, well, a year later, I'm like, oh. It's <laughs> like, what? People follow me with trombones everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You were really fat, though. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, fat. yeah. We should cover that. Yeah. yeah for <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, so... You threw as well, Dan. You you also ran, I believe, is what you did today. Is yeah. that correct? You, no, you, it was fun to watch, man. I, I, I'm, I'm an unabashed fan of the Highland Games, even though I'm totally stuck in this world forever. Like, I'm an, I'm an unabashed fan. I really like watching you guys. And it was, like, to, to your point about the team thing, it's fucking rad to watch Adrian. It's fucking rad to watch Nikita and Alyssa. Like, they're, like, legit, real athlete throwers. It's, it like... And you don't get to see that as often, just because of the nature of the sport and what it is. Like, yep. the biggest stages don't, except for what Steve's doing in Pleasanton and here. He's doing mm-hmm. an awesome job. You just don't get to see that as much. And I think it's a damn shame, but I'm really, really glad they picked those three because they, they it's not, some people can throw, but it doesn't look like the, the, the amount of athleticism, but like, it goes far. It gets there, mm-hmm. but they just look fucking nice when they throw. Like, they, their form, their technique looks good when they well, it's, yeah it's a little bit of everything i think with them because like you got adrian who's super technical yeah and then you got Alyssa, who's kind of technical but real long-limbed yeah and then you got nikita that's just strong as fuck strong fast. as balls and she looks like she's out of control and then bam huge yeah. throw just hits the front and, oh, oh yeah that's yeah. that goes that goes far with the other people that's fun man the, the women's class i said i said this Maybe on your, I don't know, sometime. I've had like 400 podcasts. You're probably sitting on one of them. So. I'm, we're almost a dozen here. <laughs> um, but man, they're, they're, for my money, they're more entertaining than the men half the time. Absol- absolutely. We've talked about that here too. Is that It's so competitive at the top. 
in women's. Like, it's so... Like, yeah. at the very top, there's a big chasm after because just, you know, population. Yeah, whatever. but it used to be, it used to be like two or three girls, maybe. Yeah. Like yeah it yeah. was Adrian. Like, she was a trendsetter. And then there'd be like one or two that would come in and push her, but she's always there up top. And then all of a sudden, these other women started trickling in and started figuring out like, wait, no, we can actually, like, we can maybe make money doing this. Yeah. Or we don't weird. have to pay to do this. That's, <laughs> that and, seems to motivate a lot of people. And it sucks for them too, like with the whole pro class <clears throat> debacle. It's like they want to be called pros and I think they should, but they can't technically be called pros yet. Right. Because if they go quote unquote, finger quotes, pro, then they're fucked. Which is how many pro games right. with women are there around the nation? Yeah. Like legitimate pro games. Well, Two, and, three, three. And if Tops. you and if you look in the bylaws of our rules and constitution, you Bible. <laughs> you, 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 you look, look in, in the, Bible, the Bible. You're gonna see that those women <laughs> right next to how old Noah was. <laughs> right? You're gonna figure it all out. But yeah, like you know, in the bylaws of our constitution of Highland Games, they say you can't go pro and then throw an amateur game. Yeah. Oh but, wait, but, but, wait. So is this something yeah. that? What the Arnold had to do this year, did it just expose an opportunity for the sport? So when you look at, again, like I think everyone in this room sounds pretty charged up by what just happened today. Like you threw well, even without a crowd. Yeah, we, exactly. Yeah. The, the crowd essentially was a regular Highland <laughs> Games crowd. Yeah, yeah it was a fucking, but, but it was the, the most Arnold, expensive backyarder on the planet. This <laughs> throw <laughs> grows well, was it we said like, way. oh, cool, I'm doing a strength sport in a big ballroom again right. for yeah. nobody. All yeah. right, cool. Well, yeah, been here before. But I think did we, did it just kind of expose maybe something. Uh, or a new opportunity for the sport to evolve. And again, I think, you know, the technically four of us in here are pros in this sport because we make money off of it. But, and not to take away opportunity for pros to make money, but is this an opportunity to make it more exciting? To bring in the fact that it's a team sport. I've always loved the aspect of team sports. Yeah. And I'll tell you a little story about my first team experience where Spencer J. Tyler <laughs> fucked me on a team win. <laughs> He Texas, was uh, the fucking so uh, show strength, show strength so at a destination hungover. Dallas. I would not blame you for not remembering it. To be destination Dallas, destination Dallas, so Texas team a, challenge. A strong man or a powerlifting meet in a gym. Oh, in Plano, from in the Plano. Oh, yeah, for the team yeah. sport, I was like, I'm excited. It was like my third or fourth year. They're like, Spencer's gonna be there. I think he's gonna be on your team. I'm like, this is the greatest fucking day ever. <laughs> I'm gonna win. You show up, beer in hand, cigarette in hand. Which is fine. Struggling. Yeah. And he's like, well, he's, he's the best weight thrower in the business. Foul heavyweight. <laughs> all all three. Foul lightweight. All three. I'm That's pretty, impossible. I'm pretty sure you quit after that. You didn't throw him. <laughs> didn't throw him. <laughs> <laughs> didn't throw sheep. <laughs> 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 what the fuck, man? What a piece of shit. What the hell is this? Was that when he weighed so much? Was that when he was such a fat ass? Probably. Probably. <laughs> So, Man, yeah, I no, it, was, so it was before bad. this winter. Yeah, it was before this winter. <laughs> it was before today. Yeah. Uh, oh, and Cher also, because Spencer sat out from Hammers, he decided to sit back, use his coaching mind a little bit. Talk to me about that <laughs> so, deep dive that he gave you on your Hammers. And, and I actually will give Spencer a compliment here. Because that was the same. No, that was a, it was a different game, so where you did a, um, a clinic where you're talking about, you're walking us through stone and Hammers stuff, but that particular day... You decided to sit out the rest. You, you were going to fucking burn some heaters the I rest probably of the day. I pulled up the hab or something. And, and the hammer, and I'm sitting there going, and I'm janky, and I'm jerky. It was, it was pretty early. It was year three. Yeah, it was, it was year three, so it was happening. And, and you basically told me, like, listen, bud, the only way you're going to throw better is to unfuck your right. <laughs> so, <laughs> just, so a year three thrower is like, all right, thank you, Mr. Spencer. I don't know how to apply that, but yes. Sure. Year like, I think it was two years ago. Year eight, Aaron's like, holy shit, yep. unfuck oh, my right. It unfucked. PR City every time. It's working like crazy. So it needed a little time to develop. I don't know what it is about your coaching the games, but you, I've told you a hundred times that happens to me. Like it's because well, you motherfuckers don't listen to me. Well, and also we don't Until know jack it, fuck about throwing. That also yeah, makes I'm it like, a little what harder is my too. Right? I we don't. Me a foot. Yeah, I don't have a five. But there would be things when we trained. Yeah. There would be I things right. you told me. Which one do I have? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> the right side of my body? Mm-hmm. But you, there, when we trained together, you would tell me things, and I'd be like, yeah, I think I get it. And then, like, two, three years later, I'd be like, oh, oh that's just what he a fucking long meant. fuse. And then, but when that it gets to the dynamite, it, it goes. It made sense. You make a real impression, Spencer, is all I'm trying to say. You make a real impression. That's what I, yep. Yep. You should ask my nephew the same thing. <laughs> Hey Mason, 
What do I? What do we need to ask Mason about? <laughs> Nothing. Okay. Good. One hundred percent. I'm not just not allowed near a school. But oh, yeah. <laughs> Dan, do you have anything to say to Mason? <laughs> No, I don't okay, know. I didn't know. I, you see, you you were like sitting stitches forward like you had stitches. something. That's what I had to say. <laughs> uh, he's in college now. He's doing fine. Yeah, yeah. Still get stitches in college. Keep him out. Keep him out. Sure. Sure. We got actually sure. fucking drop it. No, I. Uh, so I'm trying to think where I was going. The, the first thing popped into my head too. Every time I think about doing this Arnold event, first, yes, love the team format. I really dug it a lot. The second thing is a 28 pound fucking chief. Oh, God that's damn. it's there's nobody it's like picking up the 56 like nobody actually enjoys it like nobody I mean, people say oh I'm fired up about it no you're not who, who says that who, I, who said that people you that haven't done it enough to get, get hurt by it yeah sadists or the, or the I bet I can fucking do that guy that guy he, that he's guy. probably he's probably cool sure. but that 28 pound motherfucking chief we made the best and tightest one we possibly could and it it went y'all throwing it alright <laughs> no I did not throw it what did you get? <laughs> 18 like, feet. Oh, I missed 21. Yeah. Oh. I and I looked <laughs> like I deserved to miss 21. <laughs> I looked like was a 21. Was it like a pushover? Was it... Dude, did you do the jump shot? No, I mean, it, like, it was seriously, like, I kept waiting for it to hit the right, like, to hit where you could start really driving up. No. Nope. And it just never fucking happened. So then I tried to drive early one time. I tried to wait and drive late. When I tried to wait and drive late, it was already past the point where you could drive it. It was just, uh, I couldn't find it. No, and uh, it, that's that's okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because hey, you know what? Next time you run across a twenty-eight, you'll be ready. What the fuck? So, yeah, no. but mm-hmm. that's what that's what I, I like. The pin I had stuck in my and mind. You're welcome for that, by the way. Or what? Who's welcome? Oh, never mind. <laughs> I think I was just responding to a text. Luckily. <laughs> 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 when they listen to this podcast, <laughs> I touched the foot. They're gonna have to wait until next Tuesday to get the answer to that text. They're gonna have to wait Whoops. for that. So we bitched Sorry, about this Mark. like a lot of times, and uh, especially like somebody that's way closer to like the newbie amateur side, of course, as compared to you guys. Like it's the the implements. Okay, implement choice. I have a theory that I think a lot of amateurs bitch about like bad implements and heavy stuff and stone and stuff like that. And my theory is that the pros don't as much. Well, because you're come, not you're not known going for Nazga numbers as much anymore. Like the top guys, you're not going like saying like, "Well, I need to get a thousand more points or whatever to catch up." Well, sure, and, and that's where you learn too. Like it's cool to break records, but to, like you go for a field record? No, no, no <laughs> I'm tired. Well, well you pa- you packed it up at 26 today. Yeah, right, for the uh, sheet. You I packed mean, it up at we were done. It's just like, mm. and looking at the standard too, and kind of like Hayden today. There was know, no room. Yeah, you gonna have to squeeze it through, and I mean. God, I'll be honest, that's just dumb. I just don't want to fuck with it. Yeah, I get and it. And it's 28-pound sheep fucking, and my hand's all jacked up right now, too. And she hurt it the most, so. Huh. Well, that's right. You throw goofy style. You throw the, that's right on the hand, fork. Yeah. That's on the fork. So, yeah, that game, you squeeze the shit out of that, too. Yeah. Did you just skateboard my, uh, I did. Did skateboard I, lingo, my sheep kidney? When you, when you, when you, when you ollied you, that you, sheep you up there. You goofy foot, you're <laughs> a grip. <laughs> Tony Hawk in the Highland Right. I think, I think. Fuck, I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> You're on point there. I do it with stones a lot. If you go to a games with terrible <coughs> stones. And terrible stone is super subjective, too. Sure. So there's some stones that I love that people But if it's in, the, in the southeast of the United States, it's a terrible stone. Sure. That's not subjective. They're yeah. all bad. They're all bad. They're pretty not good. Down you know, we'll go to a games, and if you win the open stone, they'll ask you if you want extras to hit the field record. And, like, Matt's record at Enum Claws. He still got that stone record. No, Gary actually broke it. Did he really? Yeah. Gary's a really good stone. You thrower. gotta Ga- love that Gary, stone. Gary, well, that's, I fucking, so my, the furthest I ever threw that stone was the first time I ever went as an amateur in track spikes. Yeah. Or in jab spikes on carpet. Right. So when I came out of the back, I was facing the trig <laughs> and my foot was still facing the fucking back. <laughs> like my left foot. Yeah. Like I twisted all the way around it and I just remember being like, Woo! <laughs> It's like a hit at 54 footer. Yeah. But that's back when I was still doing a full rotation. Well, you're yeah. back to doing that now. <clears throat> yeah, I figured that out. Look, this week. Look pretty, dude. Yeah, literally. This it looked week. pretty. I know I've I've I'm aware of your struggles with it. I know why you went to the techniques you did, but you look good, man. Yeah, it felt good. Especially with a what was that, twenty pounder you're throwing? Eighteen. Eighteen? Yeah. I will never get it right. I'll never get the is, weight to those. So the Ams shots. today had to throw a twenty. A 20. Yeah. yeah. The pros threw an eighteen. What that what'd he go? What but Hayden go? Forty seven. Yeah, there there were never no big snow puts. He yeah, he, he had problems getting it in. He's so he went thick forty seven though. I think he went yeah. forty seven. He just but he, gave he stood second. he stood everything. Sure. To who? Uh, who took first? Was uh, it Van Buren? Van Buren Housing? Yeah, I think Van Buren got him on a glide. 
Yeah, he's a he's a prototypical glider. Yeah, that's the first long, time I've seen him. He's yeah. Everyone in that game class. He's like, a, a he's, he's, he's like you, but not a, cool. A monster. Uh, dude, I walked through. Yeah, and I I also like <laughs> fucking beautiful. Yeah, I was like dropping off my bag. I just I, I go eat. Two and I walked that's through. The, yeah, this is good for podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are doing great. We're basically at a bar now. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the waitress? <laughs> no, but I walked through the Am crowd. Did you walk through the? Uh, yeah, I walked through there to go watch Hayden's throw, and and I like I got my bag. And I feel like when I walk around the normal crew barefoot, you know, I lose like an inch or two. Yeah. These motherfuckers are huge. They're fucking like, monsters. The Am, Am group that's at the Arnold t- today was fucking gigantic. Though. There were two dudes that They're were massive. easily 6'6". Six, six. There were no, three dudes that were 6'6". Six, six and then that one plus. kid's like 21. Yeah. He's, he's probably 6'8"-ish, probably yeah. 400 fucking pounds. Fat West. He's, yeah, Fat West. Fat, fat West Kaiser. Kaiser. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. He's fucking enormous. He's he gigantic. Is. But I'm telling you, the most amazing thing, and we talked about this, wasn't... A, don't get me wrong, all of them were unbelievable throughout. All the videos I took. Yeah, I, I, I pay attention to I feel bad that I don't know their names because they all look like but, studs. But it was they Nick are. and, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it, I think it's Anson, Nick Anson. Yeah. Who, he is, he's probably six foot three, maybe six foot four. He's pretty 225, tall. 225, maybe. He lives in Pittsburgh. Yeah, maybe 225, but he's just like long steel cables. Cleared 17 today. Fucking in ridiculous. In the wall, there were six people. Five in at 17. Yeah, five. Five in at 17. There were six wow. in at 16 <laughs> Well, and we started looking at the pro pro class. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm looking at it like, yeah. man, I'm glad I'm likable. <laughs> <laughs> glad, I'm glad. Hey guys, if you're hey. listening, go pro. Yeah. Stop <laughs> fucking around with the amateur bullshit. Stop go playing. Pro. Stop playing for free. But yeah. a lot of them didn't turn the caber though. Surprise, surprise. Well, that's, they're newer. Two years. They're two years in. I'll tell you this too. The, the biggest thing with the pro. The, I mean, the only things that change weight, or the only thing that changes weight is the sheaf. Yeah. But the fucking pro cabers, that was the biggest adjustment. But even the Ams are throwing 20s all over the place. These big, like Southeast, they throw them all 20s now. Well, yeah, but you are only going to throw a 20. That's right, yeah. So it's, again, it's it's fucking this absolute governing body. What do we got? Fucking nine different people calling the shots. Nobody knows what uh, the no, fuck we have they're talking about. However many shots. festivals there are is how many people right. are That's what I'm shots, saying. Yeah. You got so many different people calling shots and nobody has a fucking say in anything. But I'm, 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 really, I'm really glad that you noticed that because I, you know, obviously as even smaller than them, I'm walking around like they shake hands with me. I'm just looking straight up like, oh, hey, man. So you're what everybody's going to be competing against. But even like the current pros walk through that crowd and like fucking land of giants. And yeah, this is what big kids. this is what's coming. Kids. This is what's happening. Oh, like we, I, this is twenty one years old. I don't know that because we're so in this that it's possible to see sometimes the speed of what's happening. I think we forget because we got our own shit to deal with, and we're dealing with our own competition, our own training, our own pol- politics and bullshit. But that I mean, there caper metrics. That guy posted a thing recently where it showed how many people participated in NASCA over the last ten years or whatever. And it jumped from like 7,800 to 10,000 last year. That's 10,000 new people coming in. And no, of those. No, and here's where I'm going to say. 3,200. But beyond that, so here's where I'm going to say math. where correlation is not necessarily. Oh, no, no absolutely not. So what I'm saying, I think, I think we're living more in a technologically advanced society where we probably have a lot more throwers that were involved prior, but they weren't engaging in NASCAR, they weren't getting scores in. So but some of these kids are 26, man. I don't know if I buy that. They're not like they. They're they. A lot of these kids popped on the scene two years ago. Right. It's not there like we just didn't know about. Twenty six year olds ten years ago and fifteen years ago. My point is that they're probably not interacting with yeah. NASCAR or being entered <laughs> in there. So I see what you mean. I see like, what you mean. Don't okay. Right. I, I think the I think the scale is going up for sure. Like the amount of throwers getting into it are going up, but I don't think the the distance between where it was and where it is now as is as high as it appears with that data. Mm-hmm. Well, what we need... We're collecting a lot more data today that's true. than we it's ever It's not that the... Also, back to the 10,000 minus 7,800. <laughs> we don't need the... I mean, obviously participation is good, but the bell curve needs to go up. For sure. That, I agree with that 100%. <clears throat> I agree is. with that. So, you, know, you know, the... The top end is getting more top endy yeah, in some ways. Finally, fuck. Well, we we we've joked for years about like what happens when actual athletes come to this sport. What happens? Mm-hmm. Like what happens when somebody decides like you know what I'm not making money in track. I'll well, just we've we've through. joked about that, but they have. That's true. They have in the past, but not like full no, on full thinking. full commitment. You like hey, or yeah. like a fresh out of college D1 kid that was a stud and is going to do this for real on the side. Like there's not enough money yet. Look at Hayden. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's starting to happen. It's starting to have. He's you know he's twenty eight. He's a little ways out. He tried well, to throw. But you, pro. you've got elite throwers that you come do. into it. You've got elite strongmen that come in it. You got fucking NFL players. I mean, stud athletes have come and gone. Yeah. 
But I, I guess what I'm getting at is more of them are probably showing up now. And well, I, I because can, it's it's start like it's getting popular. Matt and I always joke it's like we find this fucking cheat code in sports. That's right. Like we get paid to do this. It's like pay, Pe- people cheer dude, we, for we've me. We've got this fucking gigantic guy that started at the gym. Derek, uh, he's, he's a power lifter. He played ball at Penn State. And yeah. I think he was like a strength and conditioning coach at Marshall for. Anyway, he's a big strong fucker. Yeah. And he's got a little. Did you hear? Jesus Christ, Dan. Yeah, Dan he <coughs> might, might need a physician's help. It sounded like he's trying to drown a goat. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Derek, I can't remember his last name, but dude, just a massive guy and strong yeah. as fuck. Just did his uh, like first serious powerlifting meet. Totally raw. Went like 850 squat, 760 dead, and a little over uh, 500 bench. So 2,100 total. And uh, he's got a throwing background. He came out and threw with me the other day when I was throwing heavyweight. The fuck? My one of two training days. And this first time he's ever touched it. And he was just fronting the, sure. the 28 um, and throwing like 45, 50 with, with a standing First, first time he's ever touched First it. time he's ever touched it. And then he gets in and spins with the heavy uh, one turn. And he's going like 32 to 36. That's not cool. Well, no, he didn't go 36. He's like He was like 32 to 34. I still, 36. still. It took me years First time to... I threw yeah. a full fucking throw in a competition in Arlington, my first game ever, 25 feet. Oh, yeah. And that's, that's with and, fucking training behind me. And this in, my, in our, our generation, shit. that's great. Like You throwing a 25 your first time ever touching it and doing it, I think is fan, fucking fantastic. Yeah. It took me two years to throw that thing over 30. Yeah. Two years to throw it over 30. And then you got guys like that who are like, oh, out here, throw it out here. Okay, over this way? Got it. So I, I think the bell curve is changing. I think that, and today, it was like right in my face today because I talk about it a lot. Like, it could happen at some point. It was like in my face. That, okay, maybe these aren't like guys that like played on uniform teams or something like that. They don't play in stadiums. But they're 6'6", six, six, fucking 285 to 300, and they're strong as fuck, and they're showing up. And that used to be, like with you guys, mm-hmm. Y'all, and when y'all showed up, it was like, a, all right, we're just going to pat you on the ass on the way to the pros. I mean, you went through the AMs super fast, Dan. That was my story. And even to your point, if Instagram would have been big and you guys would have been doing what you're doing now yeah. 10 years ago, I would have found the sport at 24 years old. Yeah. I would have found it at 24 and I would have been a pro. That I'd be going on 13 years yeah, professional. Like, I can get fucking money doing this? Right. I and, had no clue. And Highland Games money would have meant more to you when you were 24. Sure. <laughs> I, I, had, I was talking to Chuck tonight about my first games. So I was a power lifter. I had a power lifting gym and, and my buddy was like, hey man, let's go throw in the Highland Games. I had no clue what the Highland Games mm-hmm. was. I had seen it peripherally and, and had a vague... You've seen the Cabo on Discovery Channel. That's same it. shit as everybody else, yeah. And, and my buddy said, hey, let's go do this. Our first event was WOB. This is the first time I've ever touched that's any fun, That's a fun start. 16-6. Was well, everybody there like, what the fuck? Ser- they were like, do we need to move? I wrote the AD before. I was like, hey, man, I was a college thrower. I was an all right thrower. I'm a, I'm a power lifter. I, I think I'll be good at this. And he sent me back like an LOL message. Like, you're going to be fine in the C class. And I was like, cool. All right. Sure. Cool, bro. <laughs> so I went 16-6. Our second event was a sheaf. I went 27 feet with a 20-pound bag. <laughs> Our third event was a Bramer Stone. I went 41 foot. And then we went to Light Hammer, and I went 115. This is the first games I ever did. How do you get that 115 back now? That's no like... shit. I've struggled <laughs> to hit it. But the, the thing is, to yeah, your what point. What the fuck happened to your hammer? Terrible, dude. And I your, throw it and, the same way. And your sheaf. Yeah, yeah I throw it the same way. <laughs> and your What wow, happened to that? You're getting old, dude. <laughs> what happened to you? You're getting weak. <laughs> but to the point, you got more people that are capable of doing that coming into the sport. Because is this of the toilet? Because of the coverage. That's the turlet. That's the turlet. Mm-hmm. So people like you, you know, you guys that are putting money into the sport and broadcasting it out, you're going to get those kind of people. So you're saying this is our fault that all those fucking moms yeah, showed up. And it's all of our fault. Because we, all, we all do it. You know, we all broadcast. Like, how but many good, people have but seen good, Spencer? But good. Game, I agree. I want you to. I want my fucking favorite throwers. Sorry, that's cute. I know. I got hearts in my eyes. But I want my favorite throwers. I want everybody here to beat the best that are out there. I don't want y'all... To, it's fun to watch y'all compete against each other over and over and over again. It's, it, I'll never get tired of it because we just hang out and we do it. But it would be fun to see some of these fucking absolute apes that are coming up. Make the pro class while you guys are still kind of in your prime and go compete and then see it. See it at the top like just the, an absolute like slug, slugfested pro. Right. And it'd be fun. And it's great for the sport. Too. I think Wally ran Enum Claw like that for a long time. You know, my first year in the sport, my first full year... Uh, I did North South in January and got my ass kicked, and then came out in uh, Wichita in April, and and 
I had clearly so turned the corner. Of April of what what year was that? Oh, 20, 14, 15. 15? I think it was 15. Yeah, so I went to North, South, and 15 and through and got like seventh place. Right. And then I came into Wichita having – North, South was the games that showed me what was really out there. I had no clue that you've been throwing in, You've been throwing as jobbers locally. Yes. And I say that as a jobber. I'm not sure. insulting those guys, but I'm saying like that's what it amounts well, to. And some of those guys have become my best friends in the sport. Sure, still. absolutely. You know, Huddle, Ryan Huddleston, uh, Eddie Johnson, John Herrick, those guys. You know, All those guys are total pieces of shit. They are. That's yeah. why we get along uh, so well. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. But, sure. but I, you know, those guys pushed me to go to North, South. They, they basically – lobbied for me with Kevin Becker to go to North South. And we went down there and, and I met these guys uh, when Mill Iron and Becker and those guys were throwing just huge Mill Iron. <laughs> right. Never heard of it. Yeah. Uh, that was that was a bad introduction. Kevin Becker was a great introduction. Kevin Becker. Shane Sutherland, he was there. He was sure, our captain. He was the captain. Yeah. That's right. Who, uh, wants, no, who, who wants chocolate? But... <laughs> They uh, they treated me very well, and yeah. they showed me they showed me the way. And then, but I went to Enum Call that year, and I think I finished third behind you and Chuck. What year? Fifteen. I don't know. I think it was. I think I finished I think third. And so I if that would have been Spencer so Chuck. That was the, I was the last amateur. Because that year, I wasn't North South. I yeah. Didn't, I didn't go there, but I did go to Enum Claw. That's when I won the AM National. Correct. Holy fuck! Yes. Because that was the same year. What? I'm so no. I was thinking like north south. <clears throat> I just got Enum Claw north south totally backwards. Oh, they're very similar. <laughs> yeah. 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 Very well, thing. That was the same year because yeah, so, because I was still an amateur really, but I had well, thrown so that, in Portland. That, that January yeah. you yeah. done north south. Yes. And then yeah, you Enum threw in Portland Claw. with us though, right? Correct. She so the queen wrote me and was like, "Hey, you're, yeah. you're to your point." She was like, "You're head and shoulders." Better than the amateurs, and I, I don't mean that arrogantly. She she it's, said you're so, just better than who that's the way it was. Right. Why don't you come throw with the pros and see? And I remember Spencer and I warming up for Stone, and he was like, "Fuck, man," because <laughs> I'd gone sixty like the week twice. before. You right. were sixty twice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that Portland Stone is like a loaf of bread too. It's yeah, not, and Spen- Spencer so snaked me sucked, yeah. by a by a half. Yeah, an not inch. the Portland Stone, yeah. but even the Open Stone is like a loaf of bread. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a piece of garbage. And he, we both ended up going like fifty six or fifty seven. Yeah. we had two big puts. So here's what's funny to me. Yeah, that's what that's what Mill Iron. Yes. When he went halfway through, dropped the stone in the middle of the trig and tried to pick it up and yeah, reset. Yeah. He's like, can I reset? And everybody's right. like, no. No. No, yeah. you just... no, sir, you may not. But <laughs> even that game. Well, I'm sure he wasn't weird about it or anything. Yeah. <laughs> no. The, the most impressive thing he did that weekend was throw a chair. Throw the chair. <laughs> out of a fifth. His best throw. Yeah. Yeah. We went to heavyweight. And I, and, and you, that's the time you broke it. That's your first world record. That's when you broke the 50 barrier. The first heavyweight. Yes, the first yeah. heavyweight. Uh, God, that's and, already been that long ago. Dude, Andy Vincent went 44 feet and Jeez. finished fifth in the heavyweight. That's that a cool day. feeling, right? Seriously, so. he was like, and he, he had the same feeling like, what the fuck is happening here? Spencer Tyler and Dan Tennyson, two of the best Highland Games athletes in the world, two of the best ever. What do they wear when they're on the field? They wear sport kilt. Of course they do. Sport kilt is the kilt for Scottish Highland Games athletes. That's all there is to it. It's comfortable, it's breathable, it's made of a nice fabric, and they look good. You can pick a tartan you like, you can personalize it, you can make it yours. I just got a shipment of uh, sport kilt socks as well. I just don't get it. So many people go to random sporting goods stores and get cheap, crappy socks. You can get affordable, nice, comfortable socks at sportkilt.com along with your kilt and so many other awesome things. All you have to do is go to sportkilt.com, use code HEAVYLIGHT, you pick up all that stuff, you're going to be looking amazing when your season starts, and you're going to be comfortable, you're probably going to throw farther. Guaranteed? I don't know. Try it. And that guy is an elite athlete. Right. That guy's not a fucking slouch. Like, he's not He's not a uh, pro jobber. Also, Andy, like, fucking scary athletic guy. Yes. Watching him throw, you don't, it's it's weird because he's not a rotational guy. Mm. He's a very Straight linear guy. Linear kind of athlete but <clears throat> if you just watch him throw and don't know his like NFL background or anything like their strongman background yeah. you're like man that's a big strong guy he's just awkward right like, he doesn't seem athletic but, but only... if you go fucking throw a football with him and like throw him some bad balls and watch him move around to catch him at right? 300 pounds yeah. Yeah. yeah you're like what the fuck are you why and what <laughs> why, <laughs> why are people still paying you for that <clears throat> that's right <laughs> well and then you ask him like well why'd you what, what stopped the NFL he's like I don't know good enough yeah. Oh, so yeah. 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 And it's word of the day. If my my one goal 
and that, that's uh, maybe we'll come. Yeah, the one goal is to have Andy do the intro. That was the best. Oh no, I want him. I, I wanted him to start an Instagram that was just called Moist. Yeah, that happened. Enum Claw. No, like four times a day, he would just look at the camera and be like, Moist. Right. That came from <laughs> Claw. By the way, you get a hundred thousand followers in that morning. Yeah. Yeah. You get it was a, at SeaTac. Nobody stays at SeaTac. Club, by the way. Thanks, my bitch. That was my advice. Five hundred dollars in Uber rides yeah. later. Hey, where do I stay up here? It's like everybody stays at SeaTac. Got a great Airbnb. Like, they did. Even Claw for two minutes. Enjoy, from the enjoy your sixty minute Uber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, so where are you, you from? <laughs> you can walk right to a casino no, if you wanted to and get a fucking cash game of poker yeah. anytime you wanted to. So you're welcome. Well, Sunday night we stay at SeaTac. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, you were a logo. You were kind of like, oh, God but, damn. okay. Here's what people. I think a lot of people that follow the pro I'm class like to fucking murder you. I guess legitimate. I, I was like, Aaron, he died to me today. So He's fucking there's, dead. there's not much that I can like dig Spencer. At. Obviously, I can't beat him on a on the field, and I certainly didn't beat him by the Enoch Nor we're a different glasses anyway. I I sense that maybe I was on the edge of irritating Spencer, so I leaned into it. No, and I you? got I got a four you? logo and just. Fucking poured gas on it. Good. You, could just, you could just, you could feel, you could spread his irritation. It's just weird. Him. That's so unlike both of you. Yeah. Oh, that's man. so, that's so odd. Yeah, we're not antagonistic at all. No, no, <laughs> not in the least. No. no we were in the truck. I think Shuttlesworth was driving. It was Shuttlesworth truck that he yeah. rented. Yeah, Bigglesworth. It was you. <laughs> Bigglesworth. Buttersworth. Buttersworth. Ho! Oh. <laughs> oh. Ho! Yeah, oh. I don't know. Anyway, it just. Yeah, I was like, God damn it, step on it, Chris. Like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like looking at him whispering, like, I'm gonna kill this motherfucker. I'm gonna kill him. I'm gonna kill him. And you're like, you got the bottle right or the fucking giant can That's right like, in my mouth. You're like, what? you sure you don't want to hit a big guy? God. <laughs> I'll give you a hug too. Picking <laughs> hairs out of his beard. He's so damn yeah. irritated. <laughs> Well, right. it was a fun weekend. I, man, I used to be so fat. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look at that picture. Right there. Let's pull that up. Take a look. Look at that fatty fat. So Dan's thing brings something to mind. Though. A lot of people that follow the pro class. There's this. There's this common like sentiment or whatever. It's like, well, I'm not like Spencer. Hold on, I know it's going to set you off. I know that, but well, I'm not Spencer. I can't do that. But I think a lot of people that see the way you've thrown the past few years, they just think like. That guy just came out of the womb fucking dropping bombs. Right. And, it, and they don't realize, like, I was with you on the Texas circuit only a few years. I started a few years after uh-huh. you did. And you were an am for a long time. Yeah. And compare that to, like, people think that, I think because you're throwing the big numbers, you're throwing the records, they think, like, well, that guy was just fucking born to throw bombs or whatever. Yeah. But you actually have the guy that's usually right there with him. You actually did just come out and fucking wreck house. Uh-huh. So it's kind of cool because there are two versions of that that lead to pretty much the same path. And I think a lot of people, they fuck up by thinking like, well, I, I can't, I'm not going to do what Spencer's doing because he's just elite. He's just better than me, like athletically and stuff. Like, no, he was a fucking amateur struggling to figure out hammers and his way of doing stones and all the height events and cabers forever. So maybe follow that. Maybe don't follow mm-hmm. Dan's model. Because you weren't, you didn't show up throwing 60. Yeah. You didn't drop a 47 foot Braemar. Like, you're probably a lot more like Spencer than you are like Dan. And the other thing to that, though, with Spencer. He was so fat. He was fat as <laughs> fuck. Yeah. A, he is probably more athletic than most anyone that's listening. True. And I True. don't mean that shitty. It just, he's just an athlete. No, it an helps. elite athlete. B, he, he had. Aww. You know, how long did you throw in life? I mean, he. Yeah, Outside yeah, you can't just count games, that. Dude, we, we, I did the same thing. I threw forever. Yeah. Uh, most of us in the pro class threw in college. Track you know, and field I mean, background we, we helps have a ton. background in yeah, it. Most, most of the top level, most of the top level guys have a track background at an elite level. Right. It's a shortcut. It's a sh- because it's the, fun- it's a the code, fundamentals man. of throwing are there. Look at Hayden today, right. man. The, but I don't think it's a shortcut because it still is 10 years the work. invested. To that, that's it. my point. That's, that's, yeah. the work. It's a shortcut yeah. when you get to this door. Correct. Right. It's a like, shortcut into that door. You went to you a better school. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but well, you went to a better school well, district. Well, well, while, we were shitty, right. Right. while we were fucking around <laughs> having land parties and like quake land parties, you yeah, guys were fucking throwing. We were traveling around throwing chocolate and biscuits. Yeah. And the point to Hayden, I watched him throw the heavyweight today. Dude, he took it like a straight up discus. He does. He does. <laughs> Fifty-six pound oh. discus. But it looked like a twenty-eight when right. he was turning with. He he reminded me 
of the speed to the front of Spencer. He he was one of the only guys that, He's that snappy, you man. see snap like He's that. He's snappy. Dude. The weight didn't look like it was fucking with him. No. He looked he looked like he straight up. He's also he owned it. He's fucking big. He's, I a, mean, big, he's, a, he's a big, dude. strong guy. All right, hey, let's do this he's then thick. because we've talked about this all weekend. I think he's too big. I think guy's thick as a I think dick. he's too big. Yeah. I think at six feet, three twenty five, what he is right now. Thick. I think he's too big. What do you think about this, Do you think I think he's too big? I think there's a, I think there's diminishing return. He's six foot, like three twenty five. I don't right know. Now. I didn't. I only got to see him throw stone, and he fronted it. I was just, well, and chief. But the reason he had to front it was he's so goddamn big, he can't get I that can't spin. tuck that motherfucker. Well, yeah. I don't have giant guns like him. <laughs> That's true. I, now, just, and, I have and these it's tiny awful. fucking it a, stupid small hands for a big guy. King. You stupid fucking figure. Yeah, fucking you got the carnival hands. hands. That's, a, that's the one. Look, man, it had to come you off somewhere, that. right? Uh, damn it. <laughs> Why are you left-handed? Your right hand's closer to me, you piece of shit. there? God, you were a tiny bitch. I know. How are you so fat with leave, such leave, tiny leave. <laughs> Well, they were, like, I couldn't, when I was that fat, I couldn't even make a fist. <laughs> you had fat palms? <laughs> like, oh, yeah. like, yeah. This lobster claw and everything. He's holding a coconut snowball. <laughs> so, look, you dropped a little bit of weight before, a lot of weight, honestly, before you started throwing world records every weekend. Yeah. And I think there is a point in diminishing returns with athletes that well, I, I both watch and ones I coach where I, I see was, they get too big yeah. my, and you can't be fat as fast as you and you can't get out of your own way. Yeah, my, my weight, my body weight has been kind of a weird science experiment. Science, yeah, we're fucking super technical in these goddamn Highland games. It is. <laughs> it is the scienciest of sports. So I always tried to cut, 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 no matter what in right. the offseason. And then try to put weight back on when we got close. <clears throat> um, will you get some feedback there? Yeah, a little bit. All right, I'll just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know it was it was it was going real well. Yeah, like like the first uh, like when I started throwing big. Another thing people don't fucking realize. Um, so going into the first season where I started dropping big numbers, bigger numbers. Every season before, I had improved every single throw. It's been a steady climb. Yeah. And then. Before that season, I literally went back to the drawing board and changed the technique on every single event. Just blew it up. Every right. single event, I changed how I fucking threw them. I remember. Everybody's like, oh man, you just, yeah, overnight. You one turned exclusively for- Until I hit my, for, yeah, until I hit my PR at heavyweight, I only did one turns until I hit that PR, which is 47 foot. And I would not go to a full until I one turned 47. Oh, that's silly. That is, that is silly. It worked. No, no, no. no. Sure. Yeah, I'm not yeah. saying the... The silly good. Is silly. Yeah, yeah. It, it's silly that 47 was the one turn that you had to get to. Yeah, but, but, to, but that's, to yeah, time, work, and uh, I don't know, Matt Doherty gave me most of my tips. Yeah, no, and, and, and that's the thing. Like, when you have a high-level mind like Doherty out there. Yeah. Well, when the sun's not burning your retinas because you have... 11 square feet of sunglasses. Full wraparound, and that's what teeth. I'm saying. It's the full, and uh, you know what? You, <laughs> Oh, fuck him. Yeah, yeah I'm worried. <laughs> Who would have thought they'd lock you in? Right? And that's the thing, you know, this new generation of throwers won't have a Doherty. They won't have him, and right, I feel bad. He, uh, they, have they, they, yeah, oh, he's coming. He's coming. <laughs> he's I out there. I mean, maybe I'll be the new Doherty. Yeah. Maybe You're I'll the old Doherty. Doherty. <laughs> <laughs> God, <laughs> damn it. I'm not the new anything at this point. <laughs> Dude, I remember, speaking of the personalities, I remember when Mill Iron came out. We came out of this. Mill Iron? Jeff Mill. Good. Yeah, Mill Iron. Good that you don't know. Yeah, right. dude, he got washed so quick. We did North South head together. Head. He, he he fucked up though, because I had a long talk with him after Loon. Right. Because he roomed with me, and I'm like, dude, I think oh, you I'm fucked up. He's a pro, and he was a pro briefly for half a season, and, and he was and really yeah. goddamn. He was good a stud thrower, really like raw. Princeton or something like that, or like some Northeast school. Like he threw no, he somewhere was, up there. Uh, uh, where Louisiana, wasn't he, or did he coach there? No, he coached. He ended at up coaching there. Yeah, yeah he ended up coaching at Tulane. Or was it Tulane? I think it was Tulane. Yeah. Yeah. Lucas McKay was his coach up in the Northeast. I can't remember where. Yeah, it doesn't, um, doesn't matter at all. But he was like a sixty-one meter discus guy. Yeah, he's fucking good and big, athletic fucker. He was good at the Highland game. Super strong, great Highland game thrower. Yeah. Just a fucking shit bag upstairs, yeah. and like couldn't couldn't get out of track and field mode. Like, dude, it doesn't matter. Chill the fuck out. Right. And would like throw temper tantrums and. Say dumb shit, and like go off on his own. And ads pay attention to that, sure, oh, yeah. because it's right in front of the crowd. And like you know, it's not like track and field. You're not, you're not in a stadium away from the crowd. They're right fucking there right. with their kids. Right. I mean, we say fuck a whole bunch, but yeah. uh, when, when you're being a fucking pouty bitch about everything, it's little people little, see that, and it's a huge turn. It's literally, the one thing you don't want kids looking up to and seeing. 
right. than somebody right. being a bad sport. A hundred percent. What's he, his his deal was, and he wouldn't he, just he let got it go. Washed so fast because we all, I was an amateur at at Loon, and they were going to bat for me to take his spot at the their tent. Yeah, literally there. Spencer walked up to Bill and was like, "Listen, man, get this motherfucker out of here." And Dan needs to be here next year. Yeah, right. Those verbatim, those words. Yeah. Get this motherfucker out of here. No, that's and, nice. and Bill was like, "After today, he's not coming back." Yeah, and right. he was local. Like basically a local right, that guy. That would have saved them money, probably. Yeah, sure, <laughs> and it yeah. super sucks for him. He's just he was a head case, and he's yeah. actually pretty he was nice young guy. too. He was still in his twenties though. Like yeah. he, like everybody that's under twenty six is a moron. Well, that's not true. Um, but most of them. I mean, that's not true. But most of them. But it's not true. I used to be so fat. <laughs> <laughs> now look at me. But you were super <laughs> smart. Right. But but even to circle back to what you were talking about earlier with this new breed coming up, yeah. there's a there's a lesson there. You can be six foot, eleven, four hundred pounds, and drop bombs. But if you're a fuck face, you're most that's likely right. going to be. And we've always talked about it. But that's a lesson to this new breed that's yes. coming in because it fast. is an entertainment product. One hundred percent. It yeah. is an entertainment product. It's a sport, <laughs> but it's also an entertainment product because it's because like, it is. <laughs> Cheek like we're, sh- we're slapping cheeks here. Yeah. <laughs> we got Lizzo hosting the fucking slapping cheeks. <laughs> we were just twerking. Yeah. <laughs> that's actually true. Those yes. were said that. I know you can't see it, but that's actually true. I think where you're going at, though, and this is uh, the statement will, will be very self-serving <laughs> because you know the way I throw. But personality and ability to conduct yourself on the field, to interact with athletic yeah. directors with the other throwers, with the crowd, with the children, and you know what? Not to finish last, but be DFL the middle, every time, yeah. buys you more time. You know what it buys you? It buys you another opportunity next year to improve and to be, to better. be better. To be better. And again, you threw out Jobber, and I get it, and I happily wear the title <laughs> of Jobber. I don't have... You're the you WWE know, guy in the black singlet that just goes out and gets fucking slammed. Right. Like, <laughs> like when, I'm, when, when I'm thinking... The guy with I'm, the razor in his pocket that cuts his forehead. Yeah. <laughs> when, I, when I'm like that visualizing... What I'm gonna win in these big games? I'm gonna win. You know what? It's not like fuck. I just beat the shit out of Spencer, or man, I just clobbered Dan. It's like you know what I did? I entertained, and maybe I came in fourth. That was awesome. But everyone had a good time, and and oh, that yeah. goes back to my point that personality, being a good athlete, being a competitive athlete, is certainly very high on the list. But sure. being able to interact with the entirety of the sport buys you more time. It Absolutely. buys you more opportunity. So, Mister. Steel mill iron, mill iron. You know, obviously. Well, like the announcer, uh, Pleasanton called him Methron. 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 She kept fucking up his name. That's Next up, good. Jeff Methron. <laughs> well, how like it's 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 your name associated with meth is never. Yeah, so we no. call him Crystal. That's Crystal. bad, no matter what. It's hilarious you're joke. Yeah. I'm gonna repeat it. We called him Crystal all day. <laughs> <laughs> Put those together, you get Crystal Methron. Oh, I see what you're doing. Okay. <laughs> Do you? Thanks. Real fast. Sometimes you got to drag me through these because yeah. I'm, I'm not I'm not quick on the pickup. No, you're right. And when I say I it's think a drug, <laughs> Spencer oh. used to be super fat. You know what helps with that? Yeah, crystal, crystal, meth. crystal methron. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> does help. That's how you did it. Oh, okay. Hang on. Well, a lighter and a light bulb. <laughs> No, I, you know, Aaron's right, and I, I catch flack, and we had a conversation at the bar the other night about, like, am I pushing for this to be a fucking clown college? Like, am, do I want it to be? I don't want it to be that, but because of what you said about how close you are to the crowd and how much it's associated with festivals and celebrations, it is entertainment. And it doesn't mean you have to be fucking WWE and fake it. Yeah, it doesn't mean that you don't have to be we, Right. You can compete with each other for real, Yeah, but it's, you still have to be a product for that AD and that festival that's not a liability for them. Yeah, there's, it's, you know, it's funny, you go back and forth, he also, I mean, fuck it, what, what do we have, like four people listening? <laughs> we got four people in this yeah, room right listening. now, yeah. there's four. You got three Us. people listening to you, We'll baby. probably all re-listen two. to this. You got two people listening. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. Ten's, Ten's, Ten's you fat fuck. <laughs> We're recording this? <laughs> I can see Dan's eyes just drifting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, so people, like, I mean, you get mad at my opinion on this all you want, like, when I talk about beefing up participation, sure, that's great. But in front of a crowd, like, you have these novice, well, not novices, because they just want to try it, but sure. C and B class throwers, or a master class that's full of first-time throwers that just happen to be over 40, yeah. and they're complaining about not throwing in front of the crowd. I'm like, motherfucker, I can run 100 meters without stopping. I'm not trying to race you <laughs> same bolt at the fucking Olympic finals. That's right. 
Like, like what the fuck? Like, put, put in your time, get better, and then get out in front. Because I think it's bad for the sport. Yes. For someone to, for on the main stage, to see, you know, anybody in the crowd looking out there and be like, fuck, I can do that. Yeah. That's what causes that. They see, they see a dude that they're bigger than or, or, or what have you, or more athletic yeah. than, and they, and they throw a 13-foot heavyweight yeah. and fall over, and the drunk idiot at the beer tent's like, well, I can fucking beat that guy. Yeah, I can and, fall down, too, and look right. stupid. Right, and then it automatically carries through to the rest of the people it does. there. It just automatically, you, you have it in your mind that you can do that. So but, no matter what anybody does, you think you can do it. I think yeah. you're always going to combat that, though, and I think what a, a good story that I can draw against is Portland. So when we threw together Portland, do you remember that asshole on the field for the challenge caber? Uh, oh, that, that fucking moron, the drunk piece of shit. Unbelievable. I mean, this guy couldn't have been five, six. Finally, I was like, let him try it. Fuck yeah. it. Let Spencer him go. was just, and like even, you know, Chuck, who can keep a pretty cool attitude, was getting so mad with this guy. and Chuck was, getting mad? And, well, yeah. So I guess he was part of like the VIP booth. He was there drinking. We're doing the challenge gaber with, you know, whomever's listening, the Portland challenge gaber, at least in, in my career. Is it's the, a massive moment. It is the largest caber I've been. I'm, yeah. I'm more well, like five people it. turned it. Yeah, I got it off the ground. Damn. Yeah, I, I got yeah. it off the ground three times and made an attempt, which was amazing. So right. boy's just running his mouth in the VIP. Just yeah. and he's no, he's like, he's like walking up, getting yeah, in line saying, to throw it. Let me do this. Let me do this. And and it's, like Spencer was being, you know, you're being Spencer, but you were getting him out though, and you're doing it respectfully. Like you don't want to do this. It's dangerous. Go away, man. Yeah, and then finally I told him. Finally I was like, listen, get the fuck out of here. Like you're gonna get hurt or you're gonna hurt somebody. Yeah, and then he. He like went around and still tried to. He went up and like Which, grabbed the fucking yeah, camera. He like wanted to a, attempt whatever. But that's my concern. Like Portland, very much with a pro class too. There's a very there's a distinction between you know the amateurs and, and the big boys who were there throwing and competing. And even with that distinction, we still had members of the audience coming in thinking, "Well, we can do this." Yeah. So yeah. How, you know, how do we fight? How do we? Well, you how do had... we show that? Af- uh, you know, no, you can't do this. You had a fucking turbo drunk right. asshole right. wearing flip flops. And then that guy was trying to throw the caber and get past you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. But how many other chads did we have in the audience that are thinking, and rightfully so, like when, when you're trying to be have vibrato and, and you know, braggadocious and say, yeah, I could totally do that. Right. You have full reign to say that. No one's going to Yeah, you're, you're on the other side of the rope. But I, I think that's the difficult part of the sport is we have to find a way to connect to the audience and say, you know what, actually, in fact, you can't. In fact, sure. it's that's where the, that's it takes where the, the best in the world. That's where the interaction with the it. crowd comes in. Like, right. So when somebody's like, well, how much does that thing weigh? I'm like, well, come pick it up. Yeah. Right. That's oh, it. yeah, 100%. That's, it. that's always the answer. Give, give always. them an opportunity always. to interact. Don't, don't tell them it's 56 pounds unless right. it's like way on the, like how heavy was that thing? So, right. well, so like it's over with. Else, it's so, like, hey, how heavy is that thing? You just hold it and let them grab it. And, does the that, onus of making that distinction of, hey, here's why this is a difficult sport, here's why there is a pro class, is the onus of making that distinction fall upon the athlete or the athletic director? Whose responsibility is it to tell that crowd, hey... Well, both. Yeah. As a right. pro, it's our, I would argue it's our... I would, right. I would I say... And I'm not on either side. Well, it's well, become the athlete's director, responsibility, it's, whether we want it's to scheduling. or not. Right. Well, the idea is scheduling. Like, yeah. If you're going to have... This is my, this now, if you're going to have an, right an elite group of masters there, sure, let them throw in front of a big crowd. In Texas, right. that happens now. The masters out throw the A class a lot of times. So yeah. that's your featured class. Because well, yeah, you got yeah. fucking Dickens and Doer. You got and monsters. And, you got fucking monsters yeah. throwing there. So, okay, put them. That's your featured class. I don't give a fuck. Fair who enough. It is. Who cares? Right. I don't yeah. give a fuck who. It's, Fair enough. Now it's going to be women everywhere. Sometimes it's going to be lightweights everywhere. Whoever the guys that are throwing the, that look the part, and or the guys or girls that look the part and throw the best, I'm with you. That's your featured class. And, and you need to you need to fucking design your game around that class. Yes, right. But or so, two classes. You can do two if you have a two day games, but you don't have a two day. You can do two in the same. Like if it's right. if it's a short event, like do men in the morning, women in the afternoon. Yeah, that's so the that other way not, around. My my point was not my point, but why I was, I was being provocative with it was. <laughs> So provocative. So provocative is that designing the games doesn't fall on the it doesn't fall on the shoulders of the athletes. No, but here four athletes the, sit talking the about the interactions it. with and the audience and having conversations with kids who are obviously engaged with it. Well, that pretty, responsibility falls on the athlete. But I feel like the athletic director, if they want to make a closer connection to why this is an amazing thing happening, why you're really viewing some of the the craziest athletic endeavors around it. 
it should fall on the shoulders of the athletic director to make that distinction and make that yeah. connection yes. first and foremost with the crowd, and then we reinforce it as professional sure. athletes with that crowd. Can but I, that's not going to happen until well, none so, of this so, is going to happen. So, I mean, some no, some no. of the athletic directors. Yeah, none of it's going to happen. Yeah, none of it's going to happen. Until you this, stop having 80 to 100 throwers at a festival because sport, they're gathering gathering injury fees. This sport yeah. will never get out of its own fucking way. No. no. Oh. People are too goddamn stupid, got their heads too far up their fucking ass to let the sport grow. Now you're talking heavy light podcast they're, stuff. Me, they're, they're, everyone, every single year or every time there's a standout athlete, everybody tries to fucking kill the sport. Absolutely. And they don't fucking realize they're doing it, but they're doing it. That's right. And also, like, with the AD thing and these committees that get formed, 99% of the time, these heads of committees aren't fucking athletes. Right. They love the sport, but they're not athletes. So their own, their whole fucking MO is, we need to get more people out here. Right. Like, no, more you need to put on a show. You need to get the best. Like every fucking sporting event that's ever. The best you can get where you are with how much money you have, get them there. But are, are they do, looking do, at that as synonymous, meaning, well, getting more people is a better show. No, better it's, it's not a fucking there. better show. But that's what it's he's saying. It's watered down. I think they right. think that. I think they're thinking that. They right. think like, oh, if you get more people, it's a bigger show. And do, it's not do, right. Do, you, can, you can look at it. There's the analogy I use, like, like people that run like fucking whitetails uh, or, or high game ranches. Sure. You fucking kill the coals. You let let the fucking big bucks stick around. Yeah. And you, the the if it's if it's not, I'm not saying we go shoot all the shitty athletes. Are you saying? But well, you, you people might did watch. Did he just say kill? Yes. Kill I murder. Said, I think he said gulag. Yeah. Jesus. But well, you, you don't you don't let the population because then you get a bunch of Central Texas deers that are super fucking tiny <laughs> and babies. all look like shit. But there's a whole lot of them. There's a lot. Yeah. Or do you want to have a good fair amount that are all fucking monsters? Well, and but you balance and that, that. That goes to every single class. Balance that against though. You do want to have the good show, but you do. I think you need to keep the show and throw or the ability for people to come try and set up and do it. My of argument, course. My argument is pretty much the same as yours. I think you schedule your premier classes better, and whatever your lower attendance day is or times is. That's when you stick the classes that are learning the games. Ed Cosner does it great. Ed Cosner does a great job of it. Ed, Ed Cosner he does a fantastic job. Fucking smokes it. Right. He has the novice group come out early as fuck, and before they're allowed to compete, the gates they have to do a clinic with Parman. Yes, sure. and I'll help him every now and again. But they have to do that clinic, and they start before the gates open. They they, they, they <laughs> like do two hours before the, the gates way before open. the gates open. Sorry, you're a novice. There's nothing. and then he won't he won't let them throw heavyweight, and he, they. They don't do the heavy events. No heavy hammer, no heavy weight. And if they ha- if we have time, they'll do a light caber. Yeah. But it's it's flat out like, no, like th- this is your introduction. If you want to get better, find a way to get better and then come out and jump into a group. But this is your first time. No, you're, you're going to throw at a fucking 5 a.m. But that, that's him being a responsible steward exactly. to the sport. And Absolutely. And he's understanding that we have, we have to grow and develop, right? Uh-huh. Because those... Those big animals, they don't initially step out in that tree and they're not good at it unless they've had some sort of track field background. Yeah. So that's him being a good steward of the sport, saying, hey, come in. We're going to show you the basics. We're going to do it in a safe way. Yeah. We're going to do it in an appropriate way. And then to Mike's point, he's going to schedule it accordingly to where we're not seeing these you know, baby giraffes hop around Absolutely. in the trig. We're seeing the big bucks, like and, you said. And here's the point. Ed doesn't have the richest game in the nation by any right. stretch of the matter. Well, no, he fights for every fucking dollar mm-hmm. at that thing. And there are games that have way more money, way more capability that don't do anywhere. And way more, there space. Are way more space. I mean, way Ed, more fucking Ed's, space. Ed's putting on a fucking great right. show with two trees in the middle of the throwing area. Yeah. All right, I'm going to jump in here and, and argue for the big games that are doing Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Great. I forgot you were there. Yeah, you motherfuckers oh. just keep talking. He's been calculating yes. over there. Pleasanton does a good job of it with yep. the male and female elites. Two more games. Victoria this year and Alaska this year. Yeah. Or 2019. They alternated the classes. What Victoria did, in 2018, we had the World Championships in Victoria, and that crowd was cheering for Alyssa Hapner more than they were any male athlete on the right. field. Truly, they were. They called her Hannah for some reason, but she had that fucking crowd in the palm of her hand all right. day. They, she, they, it was the men's world championships, and she was the. You had her the, taking the line, like, taking That the was it, and Just nobody like, cared. It was great. It's yeah. phenomenal because you don't get to pick; the crowd gets to pick. Correct. And That's and you how have it should to be. Respond to that. You do. So this year at Victoria, what Ray did was like, okay, well, you're going to throw the Bramerstone first men while you're throwing. The women are going to warm up, and as soon as you're done, women hop in the trick. 
So both classes got shut, and we did that at every event. We we stacked. That's smart. That's they easy stacked. and that's, smart. That's the absolute. That's the best. And and Alaska Jenny McDaniel at Alaska did it too. Yeah. Oh, you that's mean the they're following way. a track and field model like we've been right. praying for that, for goddamn ever? But there are people that are coming around to the idea. Is my point too? There are but ADs non-athletes that are doing on the, the committees. Same thing. Non-athletes running stuff is what you're talking about. That's mm-hmm. why they don't pick mm-hmm. that stuff. But up. so so how do you change this, right? So if we're looking at, at, at <laughs> well, you're no, in the no, wrong well, fucking so, place. But yeah. So here's what I'm saying about it. So if you look at how many athletes showed up to Queen Mary this year? <laughs> Forty bajillion. Sure. It was eighty something. It was, and I, I, I straight up, I don't mean to be mean to anybody out there doing their best, but I called them out on an episode of a, too many athletes, too many athletes. It's too many. It's and it's a, it's not, it's not. It's easy to get caught up in that. I know there's people that throw a novice BC, all that kind of stuff that are just coming along. I love you and I want you here, but I'm also thinking about ten years into this, how things look, what are the optics to growing a sport, to bringing other athletes and bringing money. Bringing people that will sponsor events and pay money instead of milking, I'm sorry, but milking entry fees out of 80 participants. That's all it is. That's so it's, it's fucking laziness on that end. And that's another fucking graph I have about the women's class. They're like, oh, well, I mean, that's the budget. We can't afford to pay women. I'm like, it's because you're fucking happy with where it is and you're too lazy to go out and make that's more right. money. I would, Go find some right. more fucking sponsors. You know what I'll do with it? That? That's where we're going to throw a plug for Chad Clark. Because one yeah, of the stipulations, fucking Chad does it, man. <laughs> one of the stipulations that he has for Green Hill, though, is that it's a men's pro class and the women get paid the same as the men. And if nothing else, whether you agree with Chad, you don't agree with Chad, he sticks to that. And either of those classes exist at his game. And he fundraises his ass off. Steve same. does the same thing. Like, they're, they're people that fundraise their ass off. What's, right. what's the girl with um, um, Celtic Classic? The that does the fundraising with them full time. You remember you've told me her name before. I can't remember. Jane. Jane. They have a full time fundraiser. They have somebody that's that's what they job. They I've talked about it before. They develop donations. They develop gifts to that games. Well, and like the Celtic is you can't use that as an. Example. It's an outlier, right? It's, it's it's a fully funded business. Yeah, it's like, but it, but it might not have always been that way. It might not have always been that way. Like I don't know the history well enough. I'm not. I'm never claimed to be a historian, but. You know they get to the like they get to that level by hustling and fundraising, and then all of a sudden you reach a critical mass where okay now we can have a full time person and it's a fucking non profit organization with full time employees that run logistics and all this stuff. Hey, you did that right in the microphone. I don't know if you know that. But made a, you also did that right in the microphone on that. I don't know if you guys are aware of the sound nope, quality issues not. that we're having. I don't Sorry. know if you guys are aware of that. Nope. Spencer's texting. So what were we talking about now? I went to go grab these. Mm, just that nothing's good. And we all we hate it all. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm pretty. No, the the idea. I honestly don't remember. No, the idea of overdoing the amount of athletes on the field because it's a 100%. cash it's a cash grab. Yeah, and it doesn't do anybody any favors. And here's the other thing too. You, just as a if you're one of those BC, you're not doing your job if you're charging the athletes to come throw. That's one of period. Them. That's one of. Them. I agree. I'm paying you to come be your entertainment product for yeah. the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, Powerlifting strongman, same thing. Right. Yeah. But I mean, at least. But in, that's that's the model that exists, and everybody's just okay with it for some reason. But they are, and I don't yeah. I don't understand it. But also, what I was gonna say, I, what I was gonna say was, and this is actually a new point, which I don't. And if you're arguing that it's not easy, you're lazy. <laughs> but and I don't come up with new points very often. I usually just rehash the old ones. Oh, yeah. But as somebody who came up doing all those kind of different games and learning from square one, like started as a novice, like I, no throwing background. I learned and got a lot more out of games where it was like me, Spencer, and four other guys. Mm-hmm. Or like a few classes. And there was time, there was breathing room, and that you, were, you weren't just crammed in and it wasn't a fucking madhouse. When I go to these gigantic games with 80, 120 people in or whatever, there's no, it's just not the same. You're not going to learn at the same rate because you're being run through like a fucking, like a product. It's like a factory. You're just being run <laughs> through. <laughs> But and it's a better experience for a new thrower to be at a game that's managed well. Yeah, I, I it's too fucking busy. If you've got fucking four different tricks going at the same time, it's too busy. There's like, no time for me to have a conversation with the better guy in my class. But hey, man, where do you throw? What are you doing right there? Right, no or whatever. It's too or busy whatever. for the fucking crowd. Like, what do they yes. focus on? They yeah. don't know where to focus. Like, wait, who? Where did this? What happened? What are they doing? What's this? What's this? It's just a no, lot of things flying. Maybe two trigs going at the same time and a good fucking announcer. Uh, the Ma- announcer, dude. We were going to get there because I was going to talk about. Yeah, that that's that's thing. number but, one. But even before, what, what I wanted to talk about is that we're running. We're past that. Area. We're no, we're not. We're running straight. <laughs> 
moved on. He's holding we the floor buckle up in your face right now. My hands are touching each other. We are not. That's fair. He got. He did the palm. We're crashing into something that is decentralized, which means that each one of these games and athletic directors can run the games as they see fit. There's no overarching better for the entire games that they're tethered to or responsible to. Thus, they're worried about how much money can we potentially make with this game. Am I going to maintain my athletic directorship because I brought in money, I didn't ask them for additional money. How many athletes did I get and did I draw a big enough crowd? It's decentralized, meaning they're only focused on that small piece of the puzzle. There's no, again, there's no overarching aspect of, well, I need to do something that may not be the best for my game. But did but they, but, for the but did they bite off the more than they can chew then by saying we have to have a big games at this festival? Did they bite up? Maybe it's just like, hey, have six dudes that are locals come throw because you don't have that much money. Instead of charging a bunch of money to 70 people and saying, I'm going to get you a big product. Maybe some of these festivals in smaller towns and cities don't need to have a big game. Right. Maybe shout they're, out to, they're shout out to K- Caber Metrics here so because he's providing some very... Who, who is that? He's, he's providing some, like, some I don't know the guy's name. really interesting name. data. That he's messaged me and I'm a pretty, dickhead. But pretty fun stuff, right? Does anybody know who the person is? He's messaged me. I'm a dickhead for not remembering. It's, he's, it's Thor Gilfusson. Yeah, Thor Gilfusson. He's in the other yeah. room. Yeah. He's, he's, over there. he's the one who runs the half, half Thor But Thor. shout out to him. Hey, Caber Metrics, if you can do this, where was I going with this? Let's think about how many games across the U.S. actually have a pro class and ones that don't. So I'd be very interested to see that because games that flat out don't have a pro class, they're incentivized to bring in enough. And one of the, one of something that hamstrings our sport is the fact that in one games, in one festival, we have to have our school system, we have to have our bush league, we have to have our spring ball. They're all on display. We have to have our yeah. pro, and we have to have our fucking... That's a good point. Our, our pro challenge there. What the hell is it called in the NFL? What's their all-star? Pro ball? Uh, pro ball? Pro yeah, pro ball. Pro challenge. Yeah. Uh, score a Super You have Bowl. to score no, a goal. But well, my point is, we have to encapsulate that all in that. Now, that's a good point. If there's not a pro class, there's no incentive to do for the better good at that point. Yeah, that's it's, true. It, it is unique into string sports and Highland Games to like get every level, novice all the way to pro, all in the same field together. But it's being done successfully at some festivals. It is. You could argue. It, is it is. And a guy, I heard you guys mention Chad, a guy like Chad Clark travels his ass off to these big games so he can put a better product on his field. Yeah. Then go fucking learn. If you want the responsibility of being an AD and you want a big games... Go learn how it's done. Go to Pleasanton and volunteer. God, so yeah. go to Enoch Hall. So, go, you know, go do it. Can you put your money where your mouth is? Can you? Can I? So the the, the strength that we have is, all right, if, if we're not going to agree with the way that certain games are run, are you going to vote with your attendance? Are you going to say, absolutely, I'm not? Are you going to say no to the check? Uh, <laughs> well, it's a good check. What's it's, the question? So say you don't agree with how this athletic director, decentralized athletic director, is running their pro games, but you know what? There's a fucking big check there. Are you going to vote with your attendance and Absolutely. say, Absolutely. All right. Yeah, 100%. I mean, I, I, yeah, I'll tell you right now. Yeah. That is an argument. I, I'm yeah. not going to say like you're fucking a And to be, to be fair, he's done it. Like, right. that, that's why and I, I yeah, yeah. That, but, you have done it. But it has to be more than just Spencer because there's 10 people who want to take your spot. It has to be more than Dan right. because Aaron's going to no take No one can replace him, Spencer. No one you know, something's going to happen. But, but that's, <laughs> that's not true at all. That is, that is your point. Pros in a point of uh, where you have stature. Influence, right. And perfect. And you have influence. You have to be able to vote with your attendance and say, you know what? I don't appreciate the way you're running your games. I don't appreciate how it contributes to the sport. I'm not going to be there. What happens when the butthurt AD that listens to this podcast reaches out to one of us and be like, well, why don't you put on a game? Because I don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I want to throw. Right. I don't want to put on a game. I want to be the product. I'll, I'll consult. Yeah. I'll help. Right. Sure. And I do. Oh, yeah. to, to that point. Absolutely. I do as well. We yeah. all, I think, most of us do. Mm-hmm. Give back. Yeah. You I've re- I've read books, you know. Right. Like, sure, I've read a sure. couple of them. And that's I could tell them some things about <laughs> things. And you said something about announcing a while back. I want to go back to that mm-hmm. because I think that's, that's a 100% agreement that there's nothing worse than having no announcer than having a terrible one. Because that can ruin it. But having a great announcer at a game is so fucking clutch. And that's such a cliche. we said it so many times. But having good announcers is... Oh, it's just, is he prepping himself for a compliment? I mean, is he... he I'm just not falling for it. He, he just, should be prepping to compliment Bo Fay. Yeah. Bo's fucking amazing. He's Bo is good on the mic. Like he, he, he should travel He has there. read more books than I have. He has. Yeah. <laughs> leather <Leather-dumb. laughs> <laughs> Many of them. Many leather-dumb books. It smells amazing. 
<laughs> yeah, 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 and you remember good announcers. Like, and yeah. there, there, there are a few of them. You remember bad ones, too. <laughs> you fucking was, remember bad ones. But so, t- who was it at Enumclaw? So the year I went, who got on the mic just randomly and started doing that? He was in the pro class. He came out of nowhere. Rob Young. Fucking Rob Young, dude. Rob Young crushed He can it, tell dude. a story now. He, his stories, everyone was laughing. They were engaged. I was like, who is this guy? Dude? Yeah, he's crushed great. It. He's Rob great. Young, he literally, he literally will say, though, he's like, I can only have the mic for like 15 minutes. He's got 15 and minutes of material. 100% out of material. Yeah. But yeah, he's That's great. Well, there, there's another guy up at, oh my God, how am I not going to remember his name? There's another uh, Baines. You ever heard Baines on the mic? Yeah, man, they're both. Great. He fucking kills it. Yeah, he's fantastic. Uh, Quint Milas. Yeah, Quint's on the mic. Quint's a lot. Of <laughs> That's because he's so smart and he uses words like cajool and or cajolery and. That well, sounds about right. Yeah, Quince, ah. Quince and, and, he's just, good. and he's just one of the most West Texas people that ever exists. And it's yeah, automatically sure. like him and him and Jack Coleman automatically automatic West Texas charm points yep. goes up just because of the accent. Bo's really good. Um, yeah, this, I'll throw my compliment. No, coming please, off today. Please do not. Please Francis do not. has a, a Scottish good accent, I guess. Yeah. That makes him a Scottish accent holder. Poosh. Uh, yeah, poosh. Ding dong battle. Poosh. <laughs> oh, that is, is that on the microphone, too? That, I mean, yeah, they're all, they, they're everywhere. You know? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, um, who's, um, Parman's, uh, like, uh, me and Parman. Parman's good. We don't, we don't, I don't think we get along. I haven't seen him in, like, ten years. But he's like, good on the mic, though. But he's good on the mic. Yeah. Like, he's good. It makes a big Well, he difference. pisses a lot of people off because he's super sarcastic. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and at San Antonio, every single time, like, when somebody shows up, he's like, who the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> he's like he's like you think the sky is blue in her world like, he's great he talks shit off to the side it's fantastic oh yeah oh yeah that, that's a big part but, but he, that's another guy too like he's an he, ex-pro he gets it he's an ex-pro and he had a bad rap as a pro because he, he was known as a complainer uh because he would want things a certain way and he was a track and field guy uh, yeah but that's kind of how he announces too but he knows his shit and if he sees something the, the only if he sees something going wrong in an amateur group or something, he'll like call him out on the mic sometime. Yeah, He'll like whoa, and he just forgets. Which the mic is song. great because I'm a huge believer in the power of ridicule to teach people how to do things. Especially, I'm sorry, but especially men. Some if you don't have like a big brother, like or somebody in your life giving you a certain amount of ridicule for mm-hmm. doing something like a fucking jackass, you're missing out. It's a huge learning opportunity. So good on good on Parman for yeah. doing that. Yeah. Public humiliation is like a doing sex there. outside. Maybe he's trying the fucking experiment. Oh my god, he, he got a dude downstairs. <laughs> oh, okay, you brought the the five sided jack. Oh, yeah, it's okay, not so. him. <laughs> Daisy and the yeah, pack and play. Just feet up. <laughs> Wait, it's not me, bro. He's in the pack. The cho- pack <laughs> he's got headphones on watching porn. <laughs> the, the, the choice of words bothered me, by the way. Not that he's not doing anything. It's it's not him. <laughs> Something's <laughs> going on out there. But it's, it's not, not Thor. Thor though. It's not him. Don't worry about it. All right, bye. He's a big old cat. Heavy Light is brought to you by Throw Bros. Throw Bros is the only online store for Highland Games athletes. Gear up, get throwing. Use code HEAVYLIGHT, all one word. You're going to save 10% at throwbros.com.